So to go over what we're going to be talking about today, um, so today's presentation is on career fair pitches. We'll talk more about what a pitch is, but really we're going to spend a lot of time talking about how you can prepare um, before the career fair to craft your pitch. Um, we'll explain what an elevator career fair pitch is, um, some things not to say to the recruiters, some things you can say, and um, expressing your gratitude at the end of the conversation with the recruiter at the career fair. So creating your career fair pitch. So some of you may be wondering what exactly is a pitch? I hear this word, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I would think about the pitch as what is the initial conversation you're having with the recruiter? So when you first meet them, what are you telling them? So just acknowledge to career fairs look really different. Um, back in the beginning of 2020, we were doing career fairs in person. Um, if you had attended a career fair in the past, you probably saw we're there in the lines. You notice it was hustle and bustle. You got to talk to the recruiter in person. Um, so it definitely had a very different vibe. Um, nowadays, a virtual career fair it is more individualistic. So you'll be meeting with the recruiter, most likely by yourself in a virtual chat room. Um, what's a little bit unique is that some of these virtual chat rooms are going to have a timer. So it may say you have five minutes to talk to the recruiter. Um, this is something different, right, than, than what was in person, because in person they didn't have a timer component. So that can add a little bit more pressure of I have five minutes to talk to this recruiter. What do I tell them? How do I do this quickly? It's a good thing, Izzo. Just like a in-person career fair, um, for a virtual career fair, if you prepare before, um, that five minute timer is not gonna make you as nervous because you're gonna go in knowing exactly um, what kind of experiences and conversations you wanna have with them. So really the key to succeeding in any, I'd say in-person or virtual career fair is making sure that you do that prep beforehand. So what does that prep look like? So when you are getting ready for the career fairs, the first thing you want to do is see who is going to the career fair. So if for um, any events hosted by University Career Services, you can log into Cougar Pathway and see the employers who are attending the STEM career fair, um, the class career fair, you'll be able to see the employers. Now, what the next step is you want to do is you want to make a list of your top five companies. Um, it can be a little bit less or a little bit more, but you want to stay within that range for this next part. So once you have a list of your top companies who you know, like, I want to be in their queue, I want to talk to them, you want to research about them. And what research means is that you want to learn everything you can about them. So go on Google, go on their website, um, the basics, learn what does the company do? What is their mission? Look at their open positions available. Even if let's say you're looking for an internship, but you only see full-time positions in their company, those are still good information for you to know just to see like, maybe what does this look like after I graduate if I'm interested in a full-time position? But gather the information that you can um, how this is going to help you is that when you're gathering the information about their mission, their job postings, internship postings, you're probably going to start to connect some of your experiences to their mission or to their internship or job postings. So to give you an example, let's say you are looking at an internship posting for a company and you see that it's really sales driven. It's a sales company. They really value motivated individuals. And you say, you know what? Perfect. Um, in my student org, we actually do a lot of sales because um, I'm in a sales student org. So that's something I'm going to bring up in the conversation with this company. But maybe you're looking at another um, internship description and they really value leadership. So you're saying, you know what? Like I'm actually a president of this student org. Let me make sure for this company I bring it up. So you'll start to connect what each um, company's skills or what they're looking for with your experiences. Um, other avenues you can do your research, you can look on their social media or news articles, um, especially for bigger companies. A lot of times they're posting maybe the most up to date information on their LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I think sometimes this can be a really nice conversation starter. Let's see that you see a company um, post that they recently won an award. When you meet with that recruiter, you could say, hey, congratulations. I saw on Instagram that your company just won this award. How are you all feeling about it? It shows that research and it shows that interest. 
Um, another big component to preparing is act um, actually saying um, what your experiences are and what you want to say out loud. A lot of times we may write it out or think it in our head, um, but we actually want to practice saying it out loud um, to get into the flow of speaking it out loud. So a couple of tricks you can do, you can record yourself or you can practice in front of a mirror. How this helps is that if you record yourself or practice in front of a mirror, not only can you hear what you're saying and decide like, okay, maybe I want to say something else or include something else, but more importantly, you can look at your nonverbals. So in a virtual career fair, um, your nonverbals are still going to be looked at. So if you're looking nervous, maybe you're moving around too much or maybe you're not looking at the screen, um, that's going to make it appear that you're not confident and you could be saying everything great, but if that lack of confidence is there, it's not gonna have as strong of an impact as if you're saying everything great and having that confidence behind it. Um, something you just wanna be mindful though when you're practicing is that you also don't wanna sound rehearsed. So sometimes I've seen students, they practice so much what they wanna say, but they wanna say it exactly the same way as they talk to the recruiter. It's not gonna come out 100% as how you practice it, and that's okay. You want to be able to have an idea of what you want to say, but it to sound like a conversation. Because if you're talking to the recruiter and halfway you stop, because maybe you switched up an example, or maybe didn't say the exact word you wanted to say, um, that's going to sound rehearsed. It's not going to sound genuine. Um, and you again, you want this to be more like a conversation with someone. As I talked about earlier, when you are talking to the recruiter, in addition to what you're saying, one of the biggest pieces is having that confidence component. And think how you can really develop that confidence is when you, again, are doing your research, really putting together the matches of what your experiences, whether it's from work, internships, assignments, student orgs, what have you done that's connected with the company? You also want to have some different examples from these areas prepared in the back of your mind. So just in case, once you say your pitch and then um, maybe they ask you a question, can you tell me more about what you've done in this student org you've been talking about? You can pull that experience and start talking about it versus sitting there and having to think about a specific one um, because you've done that preparation before. So now we're going to get into the pitch. So elevator pitch and career fair pitch, they're the same thing. Some people call it an elevator pitch because it's the idea of if you were in an elevator for 30 seconds, what would you tell someone? But both concepts really have to do with how are you going to introduce yourself? Um, so we can see it's pretty short. It's not a two minute introduction. It's 30 seconds on average. Um, and just like any introduction, you're going to say your name. Um, you can include your major and year in school. And now the second part, you want to talk about the position you're interested in. You can also mention how you found out about the position, but you want to also talk about why you're interested. So showing your appeal, what you want to be careful with is that you don't want to say like, I am interested in working in Apple because you all pay a lot and you are the best phone in the world. Um, that's not going to really show the company about what about this job posting? What about this internship? What about us besides our salary and recognition um, gets you excited to want to work here? So you want to delve more, a little bit more deeper into what is something maybe unique that let's say Apple's doing with their interns, or maybe what's something unique about this job posting that gets you excited to want to apply for this company. Um, then once you've done your research, um, right, you'll know what experiences connect to that internship or job posting. So then that next um, step of the pitch is where you can really share one specific experience that relates to that internship or job posting. So for here, let's say you're applying to a graphic design firm. Maybe you're saying, you know what, one of my strengths is graphic design. This past semester I was able to, and you can include a specific experience. Now, typically how you want to close out the pitch is you want to ask a question. So closing out with a question enables you to continue that conversation. So it could be something like, how does a company train new staff? Um, can you tell me more about what um, the company culture is like? Um, it can be a question that again, will ignite that conversation um, and hopefully to get them excited to ask you additional questions as well. 
So this is an example of a pitch. So let's say I am at the fair. I've been in queue for 10 minutes. I finally get to the virtual chat room with the recruiter and they ask me, hi, my name's so-and-so, what's your name? How I can respond, this would be the career pitch or elevator pitch. I could say something like, my name's Donna Justice and I'm a junior majoring in psychology. I saw on your company's website that you were looking for research interns for the mindfulness habits of college students research team. I'm excited about this opportunity because I've spent the past year doing research at University of Houston on college students health habits. I conducted focus groups and reviewed the data using SPSS software. Um, can you tell me more about what the data training would look like for interns? We can see this was short to the point, but I introduced myself. Um, I talked about the position I'm interested in. And more importantly, I connected what I have done at the university that's related to the internship. And then I followed up with a question and then hopefully this recruiter will be able to give me more information. And they may get excited to hear more about um, what I have done in this research health habits that I've done at University of Houston. So there are some areas or some questions that you really want to try to stay away from. Feedback that we have gotten from recruiters typically comes from them hearing a lot of questions related to students not doing their research on the company. Um, so some of the big ones that they really relate to us, like we do not like to hear this when students are coming up to us, is first off, what does your company do? Um, what positions are available? So those are two easy ones you can easily do research on beforehand. Um, is this position part time? Again, you can do that research. How much will I be paid? Do interns usually get hired for full time? Questions you can save more towards the end if you were interviewing once you've gotten the position. Um, once they've seen all the great work you've done, those are good questions to save for that stage of the career process. But in the beginning, when you're getting to know the recruiter, you're really more trying to showcase um, not only your interest in the company, but what you can bring to the company. Now, I know sometimes, particularly for internships, they're not always posted on the website or they may be changing. So you're not sure one semester they had an internship and I'm not sure this semester they have it. You still want to do that research on the company before. With your elevator pitch, you can still connect maybe the company's mission, what they do with your experiences. If you want to ask them about that internship, I would still relay that you have done that research. Say something like, um, I see that you have full-time positions on your website, and I heard in the past that there was internship positions. Um, I want to check in if there'd be any available for this semester. We've talked about the research that we found before, so the recruiter can see that you're interested, that you've done it, and then they can bring up that conversation. Um, it doesn't sound the same, though, if the first thing I tell the recruiter is, hi, my name's Donna, do you have internships? It shows that lack of preparedness. So make sure when you're talking to the recruiter, you're showing that research first when you're talking to them and then asking the questions. Something you can ask, so just some questions to give you ideas. Um, a question could be, what training or education programs does the company offer employees? What time is typically involved to do this kind of skill? How does the company measure performance? What are the company systems for feedback? I will be applying tonight. What else might I do to demonstrate that I'm a qualified candidate for an interview? So these all are all questions that you can ask. These are not the end all be all. And you think of another question you can definitely ask. If you are having trouble coming up with questions, um, connect with us during drop-ins um, and we can help you think about maybe what kind of questions you would want to ask a recruiter. And then lastly, so let's say we're getting close to the end of the five minute timer. Um, you've had a conversation, it's gone really well. Now for the ending, um, you want to express your gratitude. Um, the recruiter, sometimes this is not their full-time job. They're taking time out of maybe their full-time responsibilities and duties um, to come meet with you and tell you all about their opportunities. Um, so really have um, that gratitude toward them for coming out and just meeting with you and having that conversation. Um, you can thank them and then offer a next step. Um, thank you so much for meeting with me. Um, I look forward to applying for the job position tonight. Um, you can ask if you can follow up with them directly you're going to get one or two answers. They're either going to say no, and that may just be because of their uh, 
HR recruiter and that's their full-time job, they may just get a lot of emails and some of them just prefer not to receive additional emails. If they say no, that's okay. Still thank them for meeting with them. Um, but they do say yes, like sure, you can connect with me. Ask them what would be the best way to connect. They may tell you email, they may tell you LinkedIn, but whatever way they tell you, make sure you follow up, preferably within those 24 hours after the career fair, um, by connecting on LinkedIn or sending them an email. Um, through either platform, still make sure that you follow up with them with a thank you email, where you remind them. Remind them who you are, the conversation, an easy thing to add to that email is that if you talked about something specific, maybe that they were a fellow kook and they also went to the internship program, you can help them remember by rewriting that in that email and just saying, um, I'm looking forward to applying for the position. How that helps you is that if someone is reviewing 50 applications for a position they may not always remember who they met with but if they get that email it can maybe trigger something in their memory to say oh yeah i do remember meeting with them and talking about how i used to be an intern and it helps them remember you in that conversation so that is an overview of creating your career fair pitch um like i said in the beginning Prepare beforehand. The best way you can do that is doing that research, but making sure that you're practicing saying it out loud. 